bringing the people behind our food to life. extra chairs or if it was okay to do standing room so don't be shy we're not gonna like mic it in terms of amplification because there's pretty good you know audio in here so we're just gonna speak loudly and that way you feel really a part of the discussion um, my name is Michelle Knaus I'm with friends of family farmers uh, we this is our second month of putting on an in farmation and beer event uh, we really felt the need to bring together eaters and farmers and concerned citizens and activists to really have a discussion about what's going on with food in Oregon and how the farms fit into that piece. Um, so this particular night, we are focusing on the next generation of farmers in Oregon. A lot of you are here tonight. There's a lot of farmland in the next 10 years, 25 to 50% of current working farmland in Oregon is going to go into transition. And if you don't want to see those turn into condos or subdivisions or bought by corporate ag and turned into monocrops, then it's time to start talking. It's time to start coming up with solutions. Um, so hopefully this will be one of many conversations that, that start as a result of this issue. Uh, one of the things that I would like to do is see how many people in the room are farmers and feel free to use the term loosely I know the lady who brought the eggs has a hundred chickens doesn't think she's a farmer but she's farmer as far as I'm concerned so we have a lot of farmers in the room we do do we have eaters in the room fantastic we have people who are concerned about their local food and where their food's gonna come from in the next 10 15 years exactly I think one of the largest obstacles for my generation of people who are interested in farming is it's really almost impossible to make the money to buy a farm through farming. Um, there's a lot of really great internship opportunities out there, but they are hardly enough to live off of, especially if you're living in the city. And um, once you've completed those opportunities to actually make money as maybe a farm manager are very limited. So. We both have off-farm jobs, and um, we're saving so that um, ideally we'll be able to get a farm of our own someday. We happen to be a, a lucky few of people who have, who have purchased a piece of ground. And uh, um, let me make it quick. I, I farm the ground. My wife works off the farm, and that really is what makes it possible. Um, so I, I put that out right now. It's by, by no means... Uh, a glorious solution and all of a sudden we're in the utopia of, uh, of young farmers on the land. Um, but you know that said five years down the road and uh, you know having the the wranglings that we have I would really encourage people not to be so tied to the idea of owning a piece of ground. I think there's going to be a lot more opportunities in the at least in the near future to find super elegant very fertile leased ground. And quite frankly farming is a it's a monster in many ways, and it can really be in your heart, it can be in your ethos, it could be in every part of you that you think is, is valuable to the enterprise, but until you get your hands in the dirt and realize you know, what, a, what an enterprise it is, I'd say it's touch and go. So, uh, you know, for us, I wake up every morning, I look across our landscape, and I, you know, I, I thank our lucky stars and shake hands with the fates for getting us to where we are. Um, and it's obviously very easy for me to say because I happen to be one of those people who are sitting on a piece of ground that that the bank lets me make the decisions for. But I know a lot of, as I kind of look around our county, Yamhill, and see of what's going to become available, you know, I think the point was made and it is, it is, uh, couldn't be more reiterated that um, the opportunities for getting on a piece of ground are really not going to get that much easier. And for those people who are investing their energies in the, in the enterprise of learning how to farm and farming with other people or for other people, you're not making any money. So, you know, two off-the-farm jobs and a 10-person CSA. That's a long road ahead, I'm afraid. Um, so I would just like to throw out that as, we, as you think about this iFarm, you know, not only in your, in your own experiences, but like if, if it's possible to go out and um, if you meet older farmers or you meet people, landholders, to start culturing that conversation to say, you know, if you're not using that land or if, if you're not using all of it, you know, there are creative opportunities to get people on. And I think a real, uh, a real powerful um, 
kind of uh, front end of this wave are going to be a lot of people, like the people sitting in this room, who are probably living in Portland, who have done some farming or, or you know, have the proverbial chutzpah to make it work, who then could go to a place within a half an hour's drive and, uh, and really make a go out of it on some small acreage, establish themselves both in, in a marketing framework but also in terms of their own, you know, possibilities and, and realistic possibilities. And then you can really decide what's out there. Um, but that would be my greatest piece of encouragement. That and when you go to the bank, do not tell them you want to farm. <laughs> tell them you want to do anything but, but, uh, but do not tell them that. The advice about getting to know established farmers is golden. And it's especially important as you do this, uh, even if they're very conventional and very production commodity oriented, um, to come into that relationship with overwhelming respect for these people because they are absolute incredible heroes and knowledgeable people. And if you don't have respect for them, they won't like you and they won't do the things for you that you need. Um, our farm was financed um, uh, by the owner. We, we bought the, a piece of land that a, a farmer of 50 years